Hello, this is Dr. Dave Gatros. This is for my CDA 3100 class, Computer Work 1. We're going to do a sample MIPS assembly program in QG SPIM. This one actually is a square root routine, which we're going to show you how to do a simple compile, or assembly actually, and uh, standard calling practices. So let's just get started. We're going to start off uh, writing our code here. This is WordPad I use to write the code. And uh, the very first thing you do is you put your data head up there, and we're going to write a message, message one, and it's in dot ASCII Z. The uh, this uh, Z actually puts the null termination character there for you, um, uh, just like C plus plus subroutine calling passing parameters. Okay, and we're going to do a backslash in to null term k characters. We're going to go ahead and write the rest of our program, the dot text, to tell this is where uh, our program begins. The uh, global main, this is the entry point to our program. And uh, we're going to load the message. Before I do that, let me change some formatting here. I want to make sure this is single spacing in a word pad. So to print a string, we say load immediate, and register v0, we put a 4, that tells syscall to print a string. Okay, and let me, let me change that formatting. Okay, and then uh, we load the address of the string and register a0, message 1, and then we perform the syscall. And then the jump register uh, RA actually ends the program. Well, let's save this. I'll save. Let's go to our QT spin. Say yes. And we're going to go load it. I always reinitialize and load the file. That uh, just clears up everything and starts anew. And it comes up with the um, file explorer. Here we go. Video code. We're going to open. If we got any assembly errors, it's going to come up here, and it didn't. So everything looks okay. We're going to run. Make sure your console is turned on so you can see it. And said sample subroutine calling passing parameters. Okay, we're good. Very good. All right, now let's continue on. The next thing we want to do is we want to uh, input a floating point number that we want to get the square root of. Message two. We'll call it a dot ASCII's. Okay. Enter a floating point number. Okay, that's message two. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to load immediate. V04. We're going to load the address of A0 with message two. And we're going to just call. I could at this time go ahead and test this. I know it works. I've got the code in front of me. What I want to do right now is I want to read in a floating point number and that's done by loading the number 6 into V0 and then doing the syscall. So it's going to try to read in a floating point number. Now the number is actually put into a special register dollar sign $F0 and uh, we're going to move the contents of that into a floating point zero, a floating point register at four to uh, say uh, preserve it. So we're we'll say F4 contains the floating point value. We'll just annotate that. Now um, uh, you want to print it out? Okay, well, let's uh, print it out, make sure we read it in properly. To print a floating point number, what we do is we load immediate into v0 uh, the number 2. A double floating point number would be number 3. And then you have to uh, load the value of that into uh, F12. So let's put that in F12, F4, and do syscall. Now, uh, when I do this, I'm going to warn you ahead of time. It's not going to be formatted uh, very well, 
but that's okay because uh, when I test this I'm just going to turn around and delete that line of code. If I really initialize and load we'll go down and pull up our program don't see any syntax errors and I'll illustrate a syntax error here in a little bit. So I'm going to run enter in a floating point number 25.0 and it should print out 25.0 right after that when I enter the enter key and there it is. There's 25.0 right there. Very good. Alright, so we know that we can uh, read in a floating point number and uh, now what we want to do is uh, we want to call square root routine. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead down here and put in the square root routine. Okay. And uh, all it's going to do and we're going to call it in square root root. All it's going to do is uh, return back to the calling routine. And this is a very common thing to do. It's called a stub. Um, um, the reason we do this is just to test to make sure that the 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 call works. All right. Now we're going to set up our um, uh, standard linkage here or standard um, uh, calling practices. Um, we've got the number in F4. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is uh, we want to get some stack space, and that's usually done a couple of ways. But basically, what you're doing is you're taking the stack space and you're subtracting the amount of storage you want to uh, keep track of. In this particular case, I want to store two things. So I want to uh, two words, which is eight bytes. So I subtract eight, okay? Two words, okay? So now I've got two words of storage. The very first thing I do is I store word RA, okay, zero or four with the stack space, okay? That stores the return address. And the other thing I want to do now is I want to store the floating point value. To store a floating point number, we use the. Uh, um, let me move the cursor over there. Okay, we use the SWC1, and we have uh, F4, and here we offset by 8 in the stack pointer. And then what we can do is we can actually do our jump and link to in square root. And then when we get back, we uh, load word the uh, RA from the stack pointer. And then we load word C1 from the, <coughs> excuse me. F4 from the 8 on the stack pointer and then we can stop our program. Well, let's save that and try it. See if we've got any errors here. We might. File. Oops. File. Reinitialize and load. Okay. Doesn't look like any errors. Okay, very good. Run 25.0 and the program stops, terminates, we're okay. So everything seems to run okay without exceptions. That's a good sign, but we're still a little hesitant here on, on are we successful or not. We haven't been able to test any of this to make sure it works okay. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and set up the rest of the um, main routine and we're going to do that in uh, video number two we're approaching the 10 minute uh, time frame on this uh, video so I like to keep them around 10 minutes each go back and play this one over again again we're, we're setting up the call to a subroutine square root uh, practice writing this uh, a couple of times it'd be, uh, it'd be good for you okay 
Well, on to the next one, part two.